Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.dev and in this video what I want to do is talk more about EJS, particularly like how to use EJS with other front end libraries. Because again, EJS is a server-side templating library, meaning the actual rendering of the templates occur on the server, so before any code actually runs in the user's browser. But you might want to run code in the user's browser, aka front end code. Um, so I'm going to focus a little bit more on that today. So we're going to set up an express project, set up EJS, do all that really quick, um, and just kind of show you a couple different options that you have as um, far as front-end libraries that work really well for this or ones that you might have heard of. Uh, jQuery generally is like going to be the most obvious default answer for this kind of situation, but it's not the only option. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm going to create a new terminal and start just doing all the normal stuff. So actually first I will create the server.js file because if we create the server.js file before we do our npm init-y to create our package.json the nice thing about that is if you have a js file there already it'll automatically put the main as server.js instead of me having to like explicitly change it okay i'm going to create a script so that way we can have a notamon script notamon server.js why do i like doing this so that way i don't have to type up notamon server.js um, you know, in the future, you might be wanting to pass in like environmental variables every time you want to run you want to run a particular command. So I might be doing something like, you know, node environment equals production, you know, and that's the command I want to run, and that's a lot to type. So instead of me having to type that out every time, I could just type in npm run dev. Now I actually don't want to set this to the production, so I'm gonna just get rid of that. But the idea is that it just makes it nice to have all these sort of commands in a nice easy to call package without me having to type every little aspect of the command every time. Every argument, every variable, whatever. Okay, so I have that. Let's head now I want to install some libraries. Um npm install express ejs. That's kind of all I really want right now. Okay. So let's do it. So first we're going to bring in express. const express equals require express. Okay. const um, mm, 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 mm. actually first we want to make our app object. So const app equals express. And just to kind of show you a couple settings. The cool thing about EJS Oh, or actually just kind of the way that Express works with templating uh, libraries in general is that by default, if I were to create a route, so we'll just say like app.get and we're just going to make a catch-all route because I'm not, we're not going to be really making more than one route. So this route will just match all get requests. Um, res, or, or rec res. Now usually we call like res dot render. Okay, and we pass in like a a template name, so we'll say like index dot ejs, and then you know we would pass in some sort of object with stuff. Okay, but I won't do that right now. And then by default, it's going to look for a views folder. Okay, and then it's going to look for that index dot ejs there. New file index.ejs and then what's it going to do? We'll just say h1 hello world. Okay. So let me actually just finish this application. Let's get the server listening. app.listen 3000 console.log listening on 3000. Okay. Let's just save that so that we it a little bit. Okay, and there we go. So basically, by default, this works. Okay, now why did I have to do no further configuration? It's because the way Express works is that it works based on the file extension. So in this case, the the file extension matches exactly the name of the library. So it's actually under the hood is actually going to require EJS, and then actually call a function on that library, like generally like any compatible template library will actually have this built-in express function. And so that way it just works with express. Okay. So that's why EJS just kind of like works if I set it up this way. 
but a couple of nice things you can do okay um to um not have to like if you don't want to have to type ejs every time okay what you can do is you can use a setting so in this case what we'll do is we set the default template extension um and actually let me just first show you how it works now so if i do this i go um npm run dev so that way it's in node mod mode okay let's go to localhost 3000 and you see hello world it, it, it renders okay but if i took off the extension right now okay now watch what happens see it's going to get an error because it doesn't know what the engine is it's like okay what's what's going on okay what i can do is i can do app dot set okay and then we say hey view engine and then you can set this to ejs and when you do that, it's basically just setting what the default file extension is. So even if I don't write .ejs here, it's going to assume .ejs unless I actually added like a dot something. So now, if I try this, it should work again. And see, it works again. Okay, so there's different things you can do to customize the behavior of, of, of Express. Like for example, if I wanted to use some other engine, there's an also a function called app.engine okay and basically what this does allows me to specify the extension so i'd be like oh it's ejs and then it allows you to specify like the function that should be called whenever you whenever you use that file extension so i can say hey for those ejs templates i would want to call require ejs dot underscore underscore express okay which is again technically this is already happening like this i don't have to do this because that's generally the this is kind of the default of what express will do when it sees that that's the extension name but let's say you were using some non-express compatible template engine i could use this to kind of connect it okay and one last setting you can set um is another setting we can do is we can change the views folder change the views folder okay so i can do this i can do app.set and we can say views and then what I'll do is I'll just say process.cwd. That's the current working directory. So that's the folder that this application is running out of. Okay. And then we do plus. Actually, let me just do this first. I always forget how the cwd work. Console.log process.cwd current working directory. Function wrapped. Okay. So let me call it. There we go. Okay, so there's no slash at the end. Okay, good. That's what I was think wondering. So then I can do this. So I could say CWD, and that's a function, so I better call it. So see, I'm glad I did that console log there. Um, plus, then I can put in like slash views2. So now it's going to look for my views in a folder called views2. So now I have to create a folder called views2. And then if I created the index.ejs in there, Okay, and then this time we say, hey, H1, you are in views two. Okay, so again, if it runs this one, it's going to say hello world. If it runs this one, it's going to say you are in views two. So let's see what it does now. So if I refresh, you are in views two. So you can change the, be the default behavior of Express, but always the question becomes like, why? Okay, like again, I can survive without all of this and just simplify things to that okay so i'll keep that in there so that way you know it's visible in the repo but i'll comment it out okay and all, all you know the only real big cost here is now i have to actually say like explicitly dot ejs okay cool so wonderful now first things first so we want to let's say use jquery okay bottom line just like you would use jquery in a normal just plain html file you would want to kind of connect it we'll say inside the head tag so I would head over to code.jquery.com. Let that load for a moment. Okay. And then what I can do is I can call, let's say, un, uh, uncompressed copy 
put that here in the head. Okay, and the nice thing there is like now jQuery is available. And then again, I could connect a separate JavaScript file. I'm not gonna really get into the whole express.static thing right now. So the simplest thing I could do is just write a script tag right here in the file with my JavaScript. And, but I can, you know, let's say I create a button that says hello. Now the thing to keep in mind, any JavaScript that's inside this script tag or connected to a separate JavaScript file via a script tag does not run on the server. It runs in the browser. Okay. So for example, if I wrote some EJS, you know, and just said like cons cheese equals Gouda. Okay, and then I have an H1 here, and then I inject using EJS the cheese variable. This, these little markers here run on the server. So they don't actually show up in the code that shows up in the browser. So if I go back to the browser, like if I refresh this, see, I see the Gouda. Okay, I see that it shows up there. That we just did that with EJS. But if I actually go inspect it and take a look at over here and take a look at the actual file, you see the EJS is not in the actual HTML. Okay, that all that EJS got removed, got interpreted and removed on the server and the end HTML. But the script tag is there. Okay, so again, that JavaScript will run in the browser. So again, if I put a console log here, hello. Okay, see that's going to run. Well, let me refresh the page. See that's going to run right there. Okay. So that means I can write my jQuery in here like I normally would. So I could just be like dollar sign, you know, go grab the button and then say, hey, when the button is clicked, I want you to do an alert that says hello. Okay. And now if I refresh the page, if I click this button here, hello. Okay. So that's again, trying to just create a very clarity between that front end and that back end code. So script tags, front end, EJS, little like squid things or any, whatever templating language you're using, um, is going to be server side again, not running in the browser. Okay. But again, jQuery is not the only option. Okay. You could do react or view, uh, in there, but react and view for something like this is probably overkill. So usually the better, um, alternatives to jQuery, um, if you're not going to use jQuery, are things like Alpine. So, like Alpine's pretty cool. Alpine JS, and basically Alpine JS, we can just attach it by doing something like this: copy, put that in our head tag, just like we did with jQuery. Ta-da! Okay, now Alpine's available, and then you could, like, for example, this is an example of like some code using Alpine. So I'll just copy that out. I'll just walk you through it. So essentially what happens is that you define everything in your HTML. So here I'm saying, hey, this div here has this object of data here. So this object is data that I can access inside this div. And then I'm saying, hey, when you click this button, I only want you to, if, uh, cha change the open variable to true. So what it does, it'll change this open property in this box to true. Okay, and then this span here will only show up if this is not true. Now, one thing I am going to change is I'm going to change this. Instead of this to true, I'm going to change this to not open. So that way it toggles. So that way it goes from true to false, false to true. But now watch what happens when I refresh the page. So I go back here, I refresh the page. And if I click expand, oh, because oh, there's two buttons now. That's why. So let me get, let me give this the first button ID, um, ID equals A. So we're going to say button with the ID of A. Okay, so that way we don't run into that collision. But if I refresh, I click here and expand, see the content toggles. And see, I didn't have to do any like jQuery. I was able to kind of express all of that logic right there in my HTML. So that's the beauty of Alpine. It allows you to kind of do a lot of that stuff you would do with jQuery, but be able to express it right in your HTML. There's another really cool library called HTMX. Um, also pretty cool. So again, you would just copy like this. You know, what we'll do is we'll just copy this right here. Well, first I'll copy the script tag. 
And what HTMX is a little bit different, what it does, it allows you to, instead of, you can actually set up routes that deliver HTML, like the send render templates, but they can only send a chunk of HTML and doesn't have to render the whole page. What it'll do is that when you use HTMX, you can actually say, hey, go hit, go make a get request to this route, get the HTML, but instead of going to a whole new page and rendering the whole DOM, just swap out a part of the DOM, okay, which is really cool. So again, I can just put HTMX here and copy this. Okay, I'll put that down here. Okay, now essentially what this is going to do is that when I click this button, it's going to make a post request to slash click and then take whatever the end out the end result is and swap the outer HTML. Actually, I don't want to do that. I'm going to, let's, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, okay, let's go over here, refresh. So this is click button here. Let's click me. Okay, and see, it did make the post request. So you can see there, it's just I don't have a route for slash click. Um, but let's actually make one so that we can see what would, what would happen. Uh, Index.ejs. So let's head to the server real quick. Let's make a post request. App dot post slash click rec res and let's just res dot send some html h1 you clicked the button okay so now there is a route for that so now let's watch what happens when i click on this i click click me and see what it did is that it replaced itself with you click the button. Okay, so you see it makes that post request. It see it didn't go to a whole new page. What it did is it made the post request, took the response, that HTML, and swapped it. Okay, and how simple was that to express that? If we take a look at this um, EJS file here, see like all it is, I have to say, hey, when you when this button is clicked, make a post request, and what I want you to do is I want you to swap. So when you say swap the outer HTML, that means it's gonna actually swap this. If I said swap the inner HTML, it's what swap what's inside. But just so you can kind of see like that's how that works. So, and that's all front end. So the idea is that using libraries like jQuery, Alpine, and HTMX, you can do a lot of really cool front end stuff alongside your EJS. So your EJS can help you define sort of how the page looks to begin with. But then if you want to define any kind of like interactivity uh, stuff that happens after the page loads then you would bring in like jQuery Alpine HTMX um, so hopefully you picked up on that and some of those cool settings that you can set in Express to kind of customize how Express behaves so I'll talk to you all later have a great day and enjoy